So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Please take your seats. Now I have bad news for you. The fun bit is over, now comes the torture. So the next uh, approximately hour, I uh, will try to um, give you some hints how to do link, link budget calculations. And then uh, we will run some, some examples. I've prepared some spreadsheets. Uh, the whole material, it's not yet on your stick, but uh, it will be available for download through the ITU uh, website. And then some um, logistics uh, point. Um, please interrupt me at any time. So if something is not clear, don't hesitate just to stop me. I like interactive sessions. So um, in any case, what we need to do is to find out, can we communicate with our spacecraft and can the, com the spacecraft communicate with our ground station properly? So we need to know the performance, the characteristics of the ground station, of the, um, of the satellite, both in transmit and receive capability. We have to take into account propagation effects because uh, quite often we are using high frequencies. And uh, there, particularly when we operate at microwave frequencies, then the troposphere is our enemy, the weather is our enemy, the higher the frequency is, the more pronounced the um, attenuation uh, due to rain, hail, snow may be. Then we have to deal with noise and interference. Okay, so this is another enemy, the noise. In any system, uh, unless we cool everything down to absolute zero, there will be thermal noise. All of us here, we are noise sources. Everybody is a noise source. Anything uh, that is uh, above zero radiates in a very, very wide uh, spectrum. So from minus infinity to plus infinity. So when we take the simplest noise source, this is a resistor, and if we put here uh, some measurement device, power meter, spectrum analyzer, then the voltage here is un squared, and the average of that is four times the Boltzmann constant times the absolute temperature times the bandwidth uh, times the uh, resistance. And when we calculate the power, uh, power is un squared over r, so the r cancels out. Um, and the whole thing is independent of frequency, so the spectrum is flat. So we have all frequencies from minus infinity to plus infinity. I mean, the quantum physicists among you will say, it's not entirely true, when we go to extremely high frequencies, then uh, it flattens out. But for the uh, electric engineers and the spectrum we are dealing with to tick, tick, uh, terahertz, I mean, this is valid. Oh, okay. Um, so this is the power spectral density over the, the frequency. Uh, but this all, I also tell my students, and you should not confuse the spectral distribu distribution to the amplitude distribution. Who knows how the amplitude distribution of, of noise, of thermal noise is? So it's a Gaussian distribution function, which means when you sample it, uh, in, in the medium range is the highest probability of amplitudes. I mean, very small amplitude and very high amplitude are uh, less likely. So, um, the noise power is then proportional to the temperature. This is a constant, this is the Boltzmann constant, uh, to the temperature and to the bandwidth. And here, when we design something, we can influence. Yeah? So first of all, if the temperature is low, the noise power will be reduced, and when I measure in a smaller bandwidth, 
then also the noise power will be less. Uh, N0 is the noise density, so this is normalized into one hertz bandwidth, so uh, power is noise density times uh, the bandwidth. So now let's look first at the uplink from Earth to space from the ground station uh, to our satellite and the distance here um, is designated uh, R. So then when we calculate and we're interested in the carrier power, so much, how much carrier power is available um, uh, there. So here uh, an inverse square law applies. So if we take uh, carrier power, and I mean, uh, this is synonymous to, to S signal. I mean, sometimes you see S over N, sometimes you see C over N, but it's the same thing. So we have the transmit power. Then we have the gain, the relative gain of the transmit antenna with respect to an omnidirectional um, antenna which radiates in all directions uh, simultaneously, homogeneously. Yeah? And the product, transmit power times transmit antenna gain is called the effective isotropically radiated power or EIRP. Yeah? The point is the antenna is the best amplifier. Yeah? So either you transmit one watt into antenna which has a gain of 1000, then you have an effective uh, power of a kilowatt or you take an omnidirectional antenna and you put a kilowatt into that. It's equivalent at a distance. Yeah? So uh, then uh, the signal level will decrease and we can assume uh, we put around the transmitter a sphere and the surface of the sphere is 4 pi r squared when r is um, the radius of the sphere. Yeah? So we distribute the power that we radiate simultaneously in the sphere and then at the other end we pick up a fraction of this power flux and this is picked up by the effective area of our antenna. Yeah? So this is the carrier power, uh, transmit power times transmit antenna gain uh, time, uh, divided by 4 pi r square times the effective um, antenna area at the receiver end. Everything clear so far? Great. So um, then um, I won't go into, into that much detail. Uh, so the uh, effective <coughs> antenna area is uh, proportional to the, to the gain of the antenna times lambda square uh, divided by 4 pi or uh, this ether is the efficiency times the geometric uh, area. So when we insert that, uh, then we get for the gain uh, ether times p square, pi square times d square over uh, lambda square. Uh, when, when we take, uh, for instance, a, a parabolic antenna. So here we see the gain increases uh, with the diameter, the square of the diameter, and uh, it uh, increases if the frequency increases or if the bandwidth gets smaller. So for uh, the same size of the dish, uh, if we are going to a higher frequency or if we make it larger, then the gain uh, will increase. So now let's insert that in the previous formula. So our carrier power then is transmit power times uh, transmit antenna gain. So this is this uh, EIRP uh, times uh, GR. Um, this is the receive antenna gain times lambda square over 4 pi. So this is the effective um, uh, area of the antenna and uh, then we had from before 4 pi r square. Now this what I have uh, marked here in, in green we can take out 4 pi r over lambda square. This is uh, called the free space loss. Uh, and this is quite important uh, because this increases with the square of the distance and uh, it uh, increases with the inverse of the square of the wavelengths, which means 
uh, the free space loss becomes higher um, with distance. And also, uh, for a given distance, if uh, we have a, uh, a smaller wavelength, then the free space loss will be higher. In satellite links, this is the dominant loss in the system, as we will see uh, later on. I mean, here we are dealing with CubeSats, which are uh, predominantly, so far, uh, all of them, uh, into a LEO orbit. So the distance between ground station and the object changes. Yeah? So when it comes up from the horizon, we have the longest distance. And then um, if it, it flies over our ground station, we have the minimum distance. So the free space loss changes during the path. Yeah? But when we calculate the link budget, we must take the worst case, yeah? because we want to reach our spacecraft already when it comes up uh, at the radio horizon. So now, um, here's a little bit of, uh, of calculation. Carrier power could be expressed by uh, carrier to noise power times noise power. That would cancel out. But we know what noise power is. Uh, this is k times t times b. And uh, when I now insert uh, here uh, the um, C over N would be C divided by KTB. Uh, C we have calculated beforehand. So this is PT over 4 pi R over lambda square times receive antenna gain. And uh, uh, KTB is uh, the noise uh, power here also marked in green. Um, now, here I have made a bracket. Yeah? So arbitrarily, in the first place. So I have made here the relationship between the receive antenna gain and uh, the system temperature. Uh, here I have to say something. I mean, um, only if I have a resistor, yeah? the physical temperature is the same as the noise temperature if it's a resistor. Yeah? When I have an amplifier, transistor um, produces noise by itself, and that can be much, much higher. So when you see uh, noise temperature 500 Kelvin, uh, then uh, you can touch uh, the uh, amplifier happily without burning your fingers. Uh, it just means uh, this amplifier produces as much noise as a resistor with the same impedance would deliver if I heat it up to 500 Kelvin. Yeah? So that's the, the meaning of that. OK, now um, I have combined that. And this is a very important figure. This is a so-called figure of merit, uh, gain versus temperature. Now, uh, a mathematician would uh, now get crazy because this is dimensionless and this is a dimension. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the end, everything is mathematically correct. In the end, we will uh, calculate uh, a dimensionless signal-to-noise ratio, and all the dimensions match up nicely. Yeah? But by engineering practice, uh, we have taken these uh, two uh, uh, things together, uh, and uh, this is expressed in uh, dB per Kelvin. So this is the figure of merit of a ground station or the figure of merit uh, of, uh, of the satellite. Yeah? Um, why going into logarithmic? Uh, the reason is quite simple, because uh, here uh, the loss is a very small number. Yeah? Uh, here, uh, this one can be a very large number. So we have to deal mm. with uh, several orders of magnitude. And I've, I've been doing this uh, like here. Uh, then it's, a, it's prone for miscalculations. And uh, if I put it into logarithmic, then multiplication translates into addition, and division translates into subtraction. And to add and subtract is much easier than to multiply uh, or uh, to divide. Uh, I mean, at least if I do it by, by heart, uh, the computer for the computer doesn't matter. But sometimes it's useful uh, that you can do some quick uh, order of magnitude by heart calculations in art, uh, which is uh, Diminishing. I mean, this uh, process has started with the uh, availability of pocket calculators. We are now in the process that humankind will lose another ability, which is reading a map. We don't need that anymore because we have the GPS. But it's still good that you have some basic skills just in case that the electronic gadgets become unavailable. So figure of merit here, uh, G over T. 
in dB per Kelvin, important characteristic both 